Clerk, we have a quorum. It is also the appointed time. Let me call the meeting to order. First of all, confirmation of the minutes of the meeting held on the 20th of December 2013. The clerk has not received any proposals for amendment. Can we confirm the minutes, please? Thank you. Thank you very much. After the last meeting, nine papers have been issued to members. Uh, those are in the agenda. The next meeting will be held on the 21st of March 2014 in the morning. The administration has proposed two items for discussion. One public lighting in Hong Kong, the other one private driver instructor's licenses. These two should be uh, should have been discussed, but then they have been delayed. Anyway, um, any views on those? If not, that's the decision. We'll inform the administration accordingly. Item four on the agenda: Cross Bay Link Chang Kwan O, detailed design and site investigation. Can we now invite the administration to come in, please? Good morning, Under Secretary. Attending for this item, we have Mr. Yao Xing Mu, Under Secretary for Transport and Housing, Ms. Rebecca Poon, Deputy Secretary, Ms. Judy Chung, PAS, and then Mr. Albert Chang, Project Manager from the CEDD, as well as Mr. Stephen Lee from the CEDD as well. Under Secretary, when you are ready, Please start. We have a tight agenda today. Please be brief. Yes, Chairman. Today, we are introducing to members a public works item 822, Cross Bay Link, Chang Kwan O, and also seek members' views on the detail, detailed design and the associated site investigation works funding proposal. In order to tie in with another item, which is the Chang Kwan O Lam Tin Tunnel, we propose to build the CBL to the east. It will link up with TKOLTT at the west and also Wen Pao Road at the east, so as to alleviate traffic congestion. And it is expected that the TKOLTT will be commissioned in 2020 at the earliest. With fast development in Chang Kwan O, if we do not have the CBL, the traffic from the tunnel portal of TKO LTT to Area 86 and TKO Industrial Estate will have to go through Chang Kwan O Town Center. There will be traffic congestion at the junctions along Puyap Road and Wen Pao Road. The FC of Lechko in January 2009 has approved funding for consultancy study for preliminary design and uh, investigation. That has been Completed. Now we have already got the preliminary design, and in order to proceed with the next stage, we propose to carry out the detailed design and associated sign investigation works for the CBL. With members' support, we would like to go to the PWSC in March and the FC in May for funding support. Now, could I please ask the CEDD colleague? to make use of a PowerPoint to introduce to you the details of the project. Mr. Lee, please. The CBL is to the south of uh, Chang Kwan O. It crosses the Chang Kwan O Bay. And it is uh, going to be made up of the uh, Kowloon Central Link. And altogether, there will be a new east to west fast strategic link from the northeast of Chang Kwan O to Kowloon West. It will just take 12 minutes in the future. Right now, linking up Chang Kwan O and Kun Tong, we have the Chang Kwan O Tunnel. And with development of Chang Kwan O in the peak hours, the traffic flow of Chang Kwan O Tunnel is already near saturation. 
So the administration is actively um, planning for this Chung Kwan OLTT so as to alleviate congestion in Chung Kwan O Tunnel and would also complement the external traffic demand of Chung Kwan O. The CBL will link up with Chung Kwan O LTT in the west and Wen Po Road at the east in the east. It is a one point eight kilometer long dual two lane carriageway. It is a viaduct crossing a junk bay. And I will now introduce to you the functions and also the effect that will be brought about by this CBL. The CBL complements the development of Chang Kwan O LTT. The two will make up an important uh, external traffic network to the south. If cars would have to go to Kowloon and Hong Kong from Chang Kwan O, they do not have to make use of Chang Kwan O Tunnel or Wen Po Road so as to alleviate traffic congestion in Chang Kwan O Tunnel. And the proposed CBL would also complement the next development phase of Chang Kwan O. The next development phase of Chang Kwan O will be in the uh, to the south of the town center and along Wenpo Road areas 85, 86 and housing developments as well as the Chang Kwan O industrial estate. The CBL will also complement the existing Chang Kwan O road network. Right now, the Wenpo Road is the only road linking up um, the northeast or southeast of Chang Kwan O with the rest of the area. If there is an accident on Wenpo Road, the entire northeastern part of Chang Kwan O will be affected, especially the industrial estate there. The proposed CBL will provide an alternative for motorists so that the network there will be improved. According to our latest planning, the Chen Kwan O South Tunnel will be commissioned at the earliest in 2020. And together with the CBL, traffic from the tunnel portal going to the northeast will go along the green alignment. Uh, it will go through Po Yap Road and Wen Po Road before they can go to the northeastern part, uh, the industrial estate and area 86. And the junctions may be congested, but with the CBL, Traffic from Chang Kwan O South can make use of the CBL or the red line to go to the northeastern part and 12 minutes can be saved. Especially the heavy vehicles, they do not have to use Po Yap Road and Wen Po Road in the town center. And there will be an alleviation of the disturbances brought to residents by traffic and noise, etc. This shows what happens when we do not have the CBL on Wenpo Road and Po Yap Road. There will be congestion at six junctions. Those in yellow are signalized crossings. You can see that the residual capacity is in the negative, meaning that there is already congestion at the junctions, there may be traffic queues and lengthening of journeys. Let us look at Po Yap Road and Tong Chun Street. The residual capacity is negative 70, meaning that it is extremely congested. And the queue can be as long as 230 meters. In other words, 40 odd vehicles would be waiting for a green light. In order to take care of such congestion, we propose that the Chen Kwan O South Tunnel and the CBL should be commissioned at the same time. This is a computerized conceptual drawing uh, showing the final look of the CBL. The design is the product of wide public consultation. In 2009, we uh, conducted a design ideas invitation event so that we can collect public opinions on the outlook of the CBL. And then in 2010, according to the 12 winning entries, we made six 
options available. Then we mounted exhibitions, and we also had a voting exercise to see which one would be preferred by residents. And then district councillors were also asked to be the assessors. And in the end, we found this option which was most popular with the consultees. It is the sign of um, infinity in mathematics. Uh, it is a bridge with special characteristics, and plus the cycle track along the uh, Junk Bay coastline. It will become a new landmark for Chang Kwan O. This diagram shows the span, the main span of the bridge. Apart from the carriageway, there will be a cycle track as well as a pavement. In this schematic drawing, this is uh, the approach road near Lohas Park. You can see that near Lohas Park, there will be a noise barrier to reduce noise uh, affecting people in Lohas Park. And we propose part of 822th should be upgraded to CAT A, a detailed design and associated science investigation works for the CBL. It is going to cost $68.7 million and 34.5 would be spent on consultancy. And then site investigation works and also remuneration of resident site staff. That would make up $19.6 million. In terms of the consultancy fees, um, it is for detailed design and very complicated uh, design. Um, you have to design the main span of the bridge and also uh, wind tunnel tests as well as the design of approach roads, EMS design, uh, traffic management and uh, monitoring systems, etc., and also landscaping and environment works. As for site investigation, we propose to do detailed site investigation for geological information in order to do the detailed design. The information would enhance our accuracy in project estimate. This is our introduction, and questions are welcome. Thank you very much. Six members. Have raised their hands. Seven. Wu Chi Wai, Chong Xiu Kan, Pun Xiu Pan, Tony Jie, Yik Chi Ming, and Gary Fan, etc. Three minutes each. As the Under Secretary said, this will go to the PWSC in March. You will then have the opportunity to follow up on the design and the rest of it when you. Ask questions, please be brief. Mr. Wu Chi Wai. Thank you, Chairman. First of all, for this cross bay link, Chen Kuan O, this proposal has been discussed for a long time, and in the future, an extra link will be provided to link the town center with other uh, important urban districts. Now, my questions are first of all, I don't know whether the administration can provide more information on it. When we discuss public um, or uh, public works in Lechko, recently we have been talking about the risk factor. This is very uh, crucial in uh, assessing whether there will be any increase in construction costs. So, in terms of risk management, Will the relevant consultancy firm uh, implement risk mitigation measures or assess what the risks factors would be so that in the future, when the project's tended, the overall construction costs will, can be contained? And secondly, I know this is um, a large scale project. It's a complex one, and uh, and works will commence at a time when well, we have a lot of uh, other infrastructure projects committed. So, in terms of the uh, level of um, 
projects that we are taking up at the same time, will there be any implications? Will this constitute a risk factor uh, causing a rise in construction costs so that you need to ask for additional funding in the future? And the Secretary, Mr. Wu mentioned two points, and these will be considered in our project. I'll defer to the Highways Department colleague to uh, explain further. Mr. Chang. Now we're going to build a, a fire duck across the bay, and we're going to commence works roughly around the end of 2016. About uh, such kind of uh, link uh, on sea, uh, we have two major projects at the moment. One, uh, Hong Kong Shanghai Macau Bridge, and also another bridge in Tun Mun, and. Apart from these two infrastructure projects which have commenced, uh, they will um, finish roughly in the end of 2016. Whilst for the Chunkano Cross Bay Link, we will commence works roughly at the same time so that the um, mechanical equipments and uh, other machineries for building the link on sea would be able to be used here, and that the risk factors can be contained. Mr. Christopher Jung, I'm not familiar with Changkono, but indeed with the Crossbay Link, residents in Changkono can um, travel to Kowloon more easily and with a shorter journey time. But I wonder if this will pose pressure on the Eastern Harbour Crossing, EHC. Has the administration assessed the capacity of EHC? Well, fortunately, the Bureau has made a wise decision to uh, put the proposal of reducing EHC tolls and increasing CHT tolls on a back burner for the time being. Otherwise, the situation would get worse. Uh, anyway, there should be proper planning as population increases in Chukwano. Uh, the uh, traffic will be diverted to each sea, and if it goes beyond the capacity, we need more facilities to alleviate the pressure on the traffic network. For and for residents travelling from Chukwan O to Kowloon. Thank you, Mr. Chong, for your question. The Cross Bay Link aims at providing a link for residents living in Chukwan O town centre going to Kowloon. It provides a Link, uh, which is uh, shorter and more convenient for the population in town centre, uh, travelling to Kowloon and the eastern part of Hong Kong. This is his major function. Mr. Chong mentioned traffic coming from Kowloon Central to Hong Kong Island, and it has to do with the distribution of traffic between the three tunnels. In terms of a timetable, as the Chengkono population grows, the plan already um, factored this in. We anticipated by 2021, the population will rise to about 450,000 from the 380,000 at present. Not all traffic will be uh, going to Hong Kong Island, and this CBL is com uh, expected to uh, commission in 2020. And on the redistribution of traffic among the three tunnels, our concept is that after the commissioning of the Central Wan Chai Bypass, there will be um, more requisites for us to implement the proposal. And more or less by then, the CBL will be completed, so that we have two uh, parallel uh, links in Kowloon and in, uh, in Hong Kong Island, 
Um, this uh, we will then uh, come up with a more comprehensive proposal in managing traffic along the uh, uh, among the three uh, tunnels. About Mr. Jones' concern, maybe we will speak more on that in the next agenda item. Mr. Pun Ping, thank you, Chairman. Well, I, I share the same concerns as Mr. Christopher Jones because the population in Changquan O is still on the rise. As mentioned by Under Secretary, it may go up to 450 or even 500,000. So, for those traveling to Kowloon, um, at least some will take the EHC to Hong Kong Island. And about the population projection by 2020, has any assessment been made on the utilization of EHC? And I welcome the construction of Cross Bay Link and the Chongguanong Lamtin Tunnel. Now, my question is, will there be any uh, tolls charged? for the CBL, including the tunnel, and if so, can diversion be achieved? Well, theoretically, if you provide another link, you give them another choice. But what about the objective of diverting traffic? I don't see the any toll proposed here. No, no, no toll for the link. What about the tunnel? It will be linked to the Lambton Tunnel, Changwano Lambton Tunnel, right? Well, for Changwano Lambton Tunnel, we considered charging tolls. Um, in terms of design, there is no toll plaza. Uh, we will consider how tolls will be charged, and that was uh, one of the ideas mentioned when uh, during our discussion. In terms of hardware, we don't have a toll plaza in our design. We will then consider how tolls will be charged for that tunnel. So the tunnel toll will be different from that of Cheng Kuan Long Tunnel at the moment. By then, well, we will consider how, by um, imposing tunnel tolls, traffic can uh, traffic flow can be adjusted. Now, population. Let me clarify some figures. By 2021, we uh, estimate that uh, population will rise to 450,000, not 500,000. Mr. Tony Chair, I'm not quite clear. First of all, in relation to the 822th, we are going to upgrade part of the project. Is that right? It's only about the Cross Bay Link. What about the remainder of the project? Why is it separated? That means you're going to proceed with this part again at uh, uh, first. 822th. I see from your presentation um, the whole idea of the project. And the second question is about the link. There'll be a cycling path. Is that right? Yes. What's the use of this cycle track? Is it uh, Does it provide a means of transport? I believe it will uh, be connected all the way, not just a link. Do you have a cycle track in the tunnel then? Now, about this funding proposal, this is in relation to 822th uh, and the crossway link in 822th. As for the Chunkan No Lamptin Tunnel, we previously consulted the panel and sought funding approval for detailed design and site investigation works. Now, we are going to proceed with asking for funding for detailed design and site investigation works for CBL, and I'll defer to my colleague, Mr. Chang, to say more about the cycle track. Now, the concept of the cycle track is that there will be a cycle track on the link, which will be connected to the cycle network, cycling network uh, on the reclaimed area of Changkwano South. This will become a very good recreational uh, space for not only the enjoyment of Hong Kong people. There will be a five kilometer cycle track that uh, surrounds the bay area. 
this will make cycling very attractive there. So my question is, this is just part of the link, is that right? Part of the bridge, is that right? I see uh, for the remainder you have um, another section of vile duct crossing the Chunk Bay, is that right? Well, this part has been upgraded to Category A uh, to proceed with the detailed design and so site investigation works. For the remainder, we'll be coming back in two years' time for the remainder to be upgraded to Category A. Chairman, I don't understand why they have to separate the uh, two parts of the project in such a manner. Perhaps give me a written reply in greater detail with the technical details. Well, let me make it clear that we are seeking appro funding approval for the detailed design and site investigation works for the whole of the CBL, including the connecting points on the southern side to, according to the diagram, the left-hand side here. The connecting point is the uh, one end of the Chengkano Lamtin Tunnel, so that will be designed for the whole stretch. All right, so at the PWSC, please give us more information. Dr. Elizabeth Quart, thank you, Chairman. The Chengkano population keeps rising, as mentioned just now. We see more traffic, more private cars, more public uh, buses, and the traffic congestion is getting more serious. The Chengkano CBL once commissioned, will be linked to the Changkwano Lampkin Tunnel and Wenpo Road, and we believe it will be helpful in alleviating traffic congestions. So we support it. Some district councillors um, express concerns. Uh, they are concerned about the traffic arrangements in the future. Uh, will there be any restrictions on the types of vehicles to travel on the link? For example, taxis, minibuses, what about new territories, taxis? Um, traffic is, well, the industrial estate is not um, accessible at the moment. Will there be any improvement in the secretary? We understand the district's concerns on the utilization of the CBL once commissioned. Now we're focusing on the hardware development on the um, traffic management and arrangements on uh, the um, bus routes to be allowed there. Uh, this will be at the next stage, but in the due course, we will also consult district council's views. Another question. Apart from show, being shown on this diagram where there will be connection points with the main roads. Will there be branching out from this uh, main bridge, linking up with less um, important roads? Okay, let me defer to my colleague to talk about the connecting points. The CBL is to link up the east and west of the Junk Bay. It crosses a bay to the west. It links up with LTT. near Ocean Shores and to the east, uh, it links up with Wenpo Road. There will not be any branches. In fact, it doesn't need to branch out to link up with any other roads. Mr. Yi Chi Ming, thank you, Chairman. My question is similar to Mr. Tony Jess. Para 9 of the paper says that this is an important bridge because right now, you, if you go to the industrial estate or Lohas Park, Wenpo Road is the only link, and congestion will seriously affect the situation. And Para 10, you say the residents would like this to be done ASAP, and you also say that you would like to tally the CBL with the commissioning of the LTT. I'd like to ask about the schematic drawings. You have Potion Road on the left. Can you not? Do this at an earlier stage, even if the LTT is not completed, because this can act as an alternative. Is that all right uh, for you to complete this part earlier? CEDD, we are doing detailed design of the LTT. We can consider that point to see whether we can segregate the different parts of the works project. We can certainly consider this. Okay.
So you haven't got a decision. Since the detailed design of LTT is still underway, yes, both are being designed. Please remember that residents would like to have the bridge as well as a link to Potion Road before you have the LTT so that at least they have an alternative. Mr. Gary Fan, I'm a resident of Chen Quan Oh, I'm a district councillor of Sai Kong. So I show my concern about this cross bay link because it has been delayed for over 10 years. I applaud you for having the 2009 design concept competition. It's a very good move for taking on residents' views. But I like to say that this design of the bridge is not at all unique. However, now Chen Quan Oh residents would like to have this quick under secretary the population figures quoted by you are not exactly correct 12 years ago it was 280,000 now it is standing at 400,000 and later on it will rise to 480,000 so it it rises by 10,000 every year and in October 2012 because of the railway collapse Chen Quan O was totally isolated, and it is said that the Immigration Department headquarters would move to Chen Quan O. Therefore, there is urgency for expediting the bridge. It is not just to take care of the traffic volume, but also to minimize um, escalating costs because of inflation. I have two questions. One, is there more you can do to expedite the project? And two, what are the factors? that might delay the project as you can see it. You said it will be 2020 at the earliest. You talked about 2016, 2018, and now 2020. And yet now you say 2020 at the earliest. So I am extremely worried that as a trunk um, infrastructure for Chang Kwan I'm afraid that the CBL will again experience delay. Under Secretary, uh, CEDD colleagues will take care of uh, questions about the project itself. As for the advanced work, depending on the design and what technical factors are to be discovered by site investigation, when we come to let's go for funding support, I'm sure the project can start if members give that support. As for the technical side, uh, the CEDD please, Mr. Zhang. We understand that LTT and CBL are very much needed by Chen Quan O residents. That is why we are working um, in full steam. I hope there will be smooth passing of the projects at FC. And uh, hopefully there will not be a lot of objection against the projects. And if possible, we can start the detailed design this year and then uh, we'll go from there. Thank you. If there are no other questions, we believe that members who have spoken are all in support of the project. In March, the item will go to PWSC, and hopefully members can support the paper as well. Okay, that's it for the item. Thank you, Under Secretary and your team for attending uh, for this item. Next item. This is use of smartphones by taxi drivers while driving. A lot of members have shown concern towards this matter. Uh, this is a recent phenomenon, and we are afraid that this might have an impact on driving safety and road safety. Let us invite the administration team to come in first. <coughs> Apart from the Under Secretary, we have a few other officials. I won't go through the name list because we have a tight agenda today. Under Secretary, if you are ready, let's get started. Yes, Chairman. I will introduce to members today about the use of s smartphones by taxi drivers while driving and uh, what actions have been taken by the administration. In terms of road safety, 
drivers should avoid being distracted by any external happenings. So we don't propose that taxi drivers should use mobile phones or other mobile devices for communication, but uh, taking heed of the actual needs of drivers, say for example in an emergency or other situations, drivers do need to use a phone. At present, the law just doesn't allow the use of handheld phones or holding the phone uh, between his head and shoulder. At present, in advanced countries, whether or not drivers should make use of mobile phones while driving, they have more or less the same kind of laws as those in Hong Kong. As for the placing of mobile phones on the dashboard, irrespective of the number, this does not contravene any provisions under the road traffic ordinance. However, if there is evidence to prove that the driver's behavior is adversely affected by such a relating related act, the driver may be liable to prosecution under the set regulations. And this has to do with uh, callous driving or dangerous driving uh, enactments. As to whether we should take another step to limit the use of smartphones by drivers, we have to give careful consideration to the impact that would be brought about by all motorists and also law enforcement and other issues. Uh, so in terms of road safety, social needs, and the use of technology, we like to have a good balance amongst the three. We have asked the police to start collecting data regarding the number of mobile phones placed in vehicles involved in traffic accidents with personal injuries for further analysis. We like to know um, if uh, there are mobile phones, how many there are. We'll also closely monitor relevant overseas research findings and legal requirements. We'll also invite the Road Safety Council to research into the topic. The Road Safety Council, in fact, will work together with the police and the TD to appeal to drivers not to use handheld mobile phones and to drive attentively. I will now be happy to answer questions or listen to members' views on the paper. Yes. Five members have raised their hands. Wang Kuo Heng, Yik Chi Ming, Elizabeth Kwat, Chung Shi Kun, and Pun Xiu Ping. Four minutes each. Mr. Wang Kuo Heng, Chairman. A, an oral question was asked by me at the council meeting. The response from the administration goes to show that uh, operating a smartphone through swiping is not controlled by law. As to the number of phones placed on the dashboard, again, that is not regulated. That is uh, what the Under Secretary said as well. So there is absolutely no control at all. The administration is saying that they are collecting data to see whether there is a causal link between mobile phones and traffic accidents. I'd like to ask the administration that survey and that so called causal link, in other words, whether this has led to traffic accidents. When will this be done? For how long? When will you report back to LegCo? That's the first question. Secondly, the taxi trade has time and again criticized the administration, and they have also pointed out that there are yet no laws regulating bargaining by uh, Passengers, you only uh, give a positive answer to say that you should charge according to the meter. If not, you are breaking the law. But what about bargaining on the part of passengers? That is not prohibited by law. What is your view on this? The taxi trade is strongly asking that this should be regulated by law as well. Those are the two questions, please. Mr. Undersecretary, Chairman, let me answer the questions like this. Number one. It's true that operating mobile phones by swiping <coughs> or the placing of mobile phones on dashboards, now technically speaking, it seems that indeed there are no laws to regulate such. Because we understand that mobile phone communication is necessary um, for motorists. But it doesn't mean, uh, as Mr. Wang Kuo-Heng said, this is uh, not controlled at all. Because what we are concerned with 
is whether the operation of mobile phones would have a negative impact on motorists. In other words, would motorists be so disturbed that his driving will be affected? Right now, there are laws to regulate this. In other words, if、uh, drivers are distracted and driving behavior is affected, and to the extent that there is an impact. On other road users, because of safety considerations, then we can certainly prosecute these motorists for dangerous driving or careless driving. We are collecting data now, because I think that before we make laws to prohibit this kind of behaviour, we are not really talking about individual drivers, but we are talking about the placing of phones on the dashboard or. Operating a smartphone through swiping. Now, this is quite widespread and can affect a lot of motorists. We must understand the objective situation first. Say, for example, how many such traffic accidents there are? We don't have the data now, so we're asking the police to help us collect data. When we have enough data, then we'll be in a position to take further actions. If we adopt a broad brush approach to legislate against such,、uh, it will cause a lot of disturbance to the public. The second question asked is about bargaining on the part of passengers. At present, we don't think there is a need to prohibit it by law. I believe、uh, we have already given the answer on another occasion, Mr. Yip Chiming. I think I have a similar question as Mr. Wang Kuo Heng. We understand there are no laws to regulate this, but I have talked to the taxi trade. They are not asking for a broad brush law to prohibit the use of mobile phones, but rather they like to limit the number. We understand the mobile phone is extremely useful. Some people use it as a GPS, and therefore you cannot really prohibit the placing of phones. But if there are six or seven, then it is clear that they are for a particular purpose. We like the bureau to consider limiting the number of mobile phones. You said that our laws are more or less the same as international regulations, but you have to understand the Hong Kong situation. People drive quite crazily in Hong Kong. Someone has actually got thirteen mobile phones on. His dashboard. So you have to look at the Hong Kong situation on the ground. Don't just copy from overseas countries. As to the second question raised by Mr. Wang Kuo-heng, I would like to ask the bureau to really give it serious consideration on behalf of the taxi trade, and that is to prohibit bargaining by passengers. The fares have been set. So have fares been set for buses. So how come passengers can bargain about fares on taxis? Like, As the law already stipulates how taxi fares should be charged, why would you allow any party to、um, bargain on the taxi fares? And the secretary, now about the first point, we will consider your views in our、uh, future studies. And for the second point, as explained in our previous discussions, that at the moment we do require passengers to pay. Uh, sufficient fares, and if it's short of the fares stipulated, the driver can demand the passenger to pay to the full fare. And if the taxi driver engages in soliciting passengers by offering discounts, it's against the law. This、uh, offers protection to the interests of taxi drivers as well as passengers. If we prohibit bargaining. Of taxi fares, passengers、uh, should also comply with the law. And will this cause nuisance to、uh, people? And will this cause a lack of flexibility、uh, to taxi drivers? And we also need to consider enforcement difficulties,、uh, collecting evidence, instituting prosecution, etc. We want to point out that there will be great difficulties in these aspects. That's why we have、uh, rolled out the measure. There will be an increase in taxi fares for shorter journeys and a decrease for longer journeys. And we see, to some extent, this measure has、um, somewhat curbed 
uh, bargaining activities. We do keep an open mind, but at present we don't see any need to um, ban bargaining. Mr. Frankie Yick, Under Secretary, I think it's a matter of uh, awareness. If you allow passengers to bargain, they will continue to uh, call taxi services uh, and ask for d discounts. And if you tell passengers that this is against the law, then that's a different matter. And the Secretary, I think members' view, um, views are loud and clear. And if we just prohibit bargaining on either side, this can resolve the problem. And as mentioned by Mr. Yick, on the placing of mobile phones on the dashboards of taxis, uh, there should be a cap on the number of mobile phones allowed. And not all vehicles should be controlled, perhaps commercial vehicles or even um, to narrow down the scope, just taxis. You don't need to conduct in-depth studies because not many vehicles will be involved. Dr. Elizabeth Quatt, thank you, Chairman. Now, I think the administration's reply is really out of touch with reality. Uh, you found this problem uh, in 2008, and that's why you proposed to increase uh, fares for shorter journeys and decrease fares for longer journeys to resolve the problem. We're, st we're here discussing this problem because we see this problem existing now. Uh, indeed, uh, um, in the, some taxis, we see a row of mobile phones on the dashboards and passengers really worried about their safety. That's why we need to discuss this item here. We see the hazards. In so doing, we ask the administration to resolve the problem. The administration tells us that they have resolved the problem by the measures introduced earlier, and it's really ridiculous. Now, marketing is not against the law, and that's why we see this problem. That's the reason for having so many mobile phones on the dashboard of taxis. If you don't stop or, or uh, prevent passengers from bargaining uh, on taxi fares, this problem will continue to exist. Road safety is the responsibility of the government. Apart from taxis, what about LRT and uh, tram um, conductors? Is it against the law for them to operate their mobile phones because uh, in a previous accident an LRT uh, driver was uh, using his mobile phone and there was an accident and we said that the law could not be enforced. So can the law be enforced in such circumstances? And the Secretary, for commercial vehicles and taxis where uh, lots of mobile phones are displayed on their dashboards. So, uh, I understand members' concerns. However, like I said, if we we are to legislate to ban such practice, we need it, there have to be justifications. Placing mobile phones beside on on dashboards of taxis doesn't mean it's a nuisance. Whether there is a correlation between such practice and the number of accidents, we need to be care careful in um, uh, analyzing this uh, situation. I will also consider the unique um, situation in Hong Kong, and uh, at the same time, we need to have an extensive consultation for road users. Is it fair to just impose a ban on taxi drivers but not other commercial vehicle drivers? We need to consider it very carefully. And Dr. Elizabeth Quart points out that in terms of uh, other road users or perhaps uh, railway uh, conductors, is it against the law uh, for drivers to use mobile phones? Well. They are actually are covered by the MTR's uh, ordinance, for example. Um, if the driver conducts any deliberate acts or due to negligence, 
commit any act that uh, causes a danger to passengers, he is liable. As for LRT, the network shares uh, the road with other road users, so it's covered by the road traffic ordinance. So the uh, conductors may be liable for careless driving or dangerous driving. So I feel really uh, enraged. Having heard under Secretary's reply, do you mean to say that you need to have data to support uh, such uh, findings? That is, you only legislate when you see a lot of accidents involving taxi drivers using mobile phones on the road. We see many potential problems here. There may not be a, a, a great number of accidents at the moment, but are you going to wait for serious accidents to happen, to wait for lots of accidents to happen before the government decides to legislate? Is this what we should do? Mr. Christopher John. Well, um, I share Dr. Elizabeth Quartz's view. I find this reply unreasonable. I asked a question in the council last year, and now you say that uh, you will start a, uh, conducting a study. Uh, should we wait for accidents to happen? It's just common sense. You have um, uh, several mobile phones on the dashboards, and you operate with your fingertips. Uh, unlike traditional mobile phones, with for smart mobile phones, you you tap on the um, surface of the phone. It's just a small screen, and it is impossible to say that the driver is not distracted. This is just common sense. You don't need to wait for fatal accidents to happen to reach uh, the threshold for you to kickstart any study. You don't need to draw reference from overseas uh, jurisdictions. As long as, say, there are more than two mobile phones, you can prosecute the driver. What's the point of having two mobile phones on at the same time whilst you're driving? Are you driving or operating your mobile phones? So be a responsible under secretary. You should um, consider for the sake of uh, passenger safety. Now, some taxi drivers even jot uh, jot down um, the uh, information with pen and paper. So, you really need to speed up and resolve the problem, Under Secretary. Chairman, I understand members' concerns and their feelings. We will consider carefully. The possibility of such practice posing risks, but and we need to strike a balance. On the one hand, as taxi passengers, they may be concerned whether operating mobile phones by drivers in such a manner may cause danger. At the same time, we also need to consider advancement in technology. Um, will interference be caused? By simply tapping uh, on the mobile phone, that's not. It's not that simple. You have your own chauffeur. You don't uh, ride in taxis. You don't understand the problem. For taxi drive drivers, some have four mobile phones on the dashboards, and they drive and operate with uh, by through swiping at the same time. You can ask your chauffeur to place more mobile phones on the dashboards. If you still find this acceptable, I have. Um, uh, then I, I'm speechless. On the secretary, give it a try. Uh, like I said, I understand the uh, feeling of passengers inside taxis with um, so many mobile phones on dashboards. However, we need to have justifications to legislate against it. Well, the justification is simple. You don't need to have four or five mobile phones. You have one or two mobile phones, and that would be necessary. If the if there are more than two, then and the driver should be arrested. There is no need for the mobile phones to be placed on dashboards, and it's not like traditional phones. And there are apps on s smart mobile phones. So they need to tap um, to choose yes or no, for example, under secretary. Like I explained just now, at present we do have laws. Prohibiting driver uh, of certain practice or penalty can, will be imposed on drivers. 
who endangers the safety of other road users if he um, gets distracted whilst driving on the road. At the same time, we need to strike a balance. I understand members' concerns and feelings, and in our study, we will factor this in. Mr. Punsopeng, thank you, Chairman. The members of the public are concerned about the placing of uh, a number of mobile phones on dashboards of taxis. This should be dealt with as soon as possible. The administration says that the police will be commissioned to collect data. Now, my question is, how long will this take? There should be short-term uh, measures to combat this scenario. And you say that you will continue to work with the Road Safety Council to enhance publicity and education. Uh, can you tell me more details? And the Secretary. We've tasked the Road Safety Council to do two things. First of all, on such driving um, demeanor and the use of mobile phones while driving, some studies will be conducted. The studies will look into our uh, local situations and also practices overseas. This will be conducive in stepping up um, our work in the next stage. And the second thing is that the Road Safety Council will work in collaboration with the police and the transport department to enhance education and publicity work. When and how? Any specific details on the arrangements? The Road Safety Council will be responsible for it because it is a council, uh, an, an independent body, and we will work with them as soon as possible. But the government should have um, direction. Um, well, the Road Safety Council also understands the public's concerns. We will urge the council to start work as soon as possible. Mr. Albert Chan. Chairman, now accountable officials are really superficial in uh, understanding the root of the problem. The Secretary for Development knows nothing about planning and about the uh, Baptist University or the site next to Baptist University. We see this problem. The Accountability officials just do not know the plight of the public, meaning the severity of the problem. This has to do with taxi drivers. Placing so many mobile phones, thus affecting safety, is not just taxi drivers, even PLB drivers also have this problem. It is not just smartphones sometimes. They have other communication devices. They make use of such devices. to chat, to crack jokes, sometimes for a stretch of 20 minutes. They get so excited, so road safety is affected. The question is, Hong Kong as a society, how do we view such professional drivers of taxis and PLBs? What are our requirements of them? Go to Japan. Look at the professional drivers there. They're really professional. They have a the right uh, gear, they wear white gloves, they wear a, a tuxedo suit, and they drive in a professional manner. Compared to Hong Kong, I think we should be ashamed of ourselves. We are both international metropolis, and taxi licenses in Hong Kong are worth six million to seven millions. And yet, taxi service has remained the same for over 50 years. I believe taxi drivers were more professional in the 50s or 60s. Now they just want to make a profit. Because of the burden to make a living, they are making an all-out effort to get passengers. And this is worrying. And you have to regulate it maybe through legislation or through the 
taxi driver's license. I think you can consider doing something with the taxi driver's license. So the executive authority of the transport department can help to increase regulation. The thing is, this placing of smartphones or other communication devices on the dashboard, does it constitute surface safety? That's the crux of the problem. So many members have talked about this and you say you understand the worries of the members. But what are you going to do? What are you going to do? It is not good enough for you to say you understand what members are saying. Don't stay in the seat like a piece of dead wood. You have known the problem for many years. Do you have to wait for somebody to die from an accident and then you wake up from your dreams? Ten years ago, I talked about Tin Shui Wan. Nobody heeded my words. And then suddenly, a family of three jumped to their death and the entire society was shocked. You should not wait for luck. You should not wait for somebody to die. If you have seen how taxi drivers and PLB drivers are ruthless because they are affected and distracted by smartphone conversations, you should rightly be very afraid. And you, you can be afraid whether you will arrive at your destination safely. I myself actually spoke up and asked the driver not to talk on a mobile phone. So do you have this crisis sense? Uh, you, the entire administration doesn't have a sense of crisis, except the financial secretary who has an inflated sense of crisis. What can you do in the short term to rectify the situation? Under secretary, Mr. Chan talked about uh, an important point, in fact, and that is the driving behavior of professional drivers. On the one hand, we can start from the point of regulation, but on the other hand, we can also educate them about their integrity. Cut out that nonsense. Well, I'd like to say that in Japan, there is no prohibition of swiping on mobile phones. But do you see seven mobile phones on the dashboard of Japanese taxis? Well, that is why in our survey, we are aware that if we are to no limit the number of phones, should it be one or five? And should the phones be switched on before they are regarded as having been placed on a vehicle? Well, this has been with us for many years, Under Secretary. You have been in that seat for many years as well, and this is not a recent problem. It seems you are hearing it for the first time today. Okay, understood. All right. I think members, uh, many of them have asked a similar question. Under Secretary, you really need to take more taxi rides and experience the fear that you will feel. And members have put forward requests, hoping that you can expedite the survey. Last member, Mr. Wu Chiwai. Thank you, Chair. I have been listening in to members' questions and the administration's response upstairs. Taxi drivers are commercial or professional drivers. I believe we should have a higher requirement of safety on them. I think uh, what we are doing is not in keeping with the demand of present times and whether the devices have exceeded what they do need for safe driving. Of course, I won't say that any phone swiping should be prohibited because, in fact, there could be devices requiring swiping for operation. However, you should limit it to a basic fundamental number so they can function from day to day. This is the basic issue. Secondly, why is it that in our society nowadays um, that we see this happening to taxis and PLBs? Why is it that a proportion of them are tapping into the market in this way so that they keep out other competitors? 
in their daily operation. I think this is the crux of the problem. In Hong Kong, we have a limit on commercial vehicles and such limits are limiting uh, newcomers into the market and as a result you can only go for legislation in order to regulate the problems and you can't depend on market forces meaning competition for quality of service to be raised education takes a long time to sink in so I think you should do two things at the same time in the short term at least you have this direction for review in other words that you should not have devices exceeding the crucial number for operation because road safety can be affected and secondly you should comprehensively review the regulation of the number of such public transport modes you should review whether it is appropriate perhaps you should say for example issue time limited licenses so that there could be more incomers or newcomers into the trade what could that be a policy consideration under secretary the member asked two questions number one as other members have said we will certainly take on board members views and continue with the work secondly you asked whether we should do something about the licenses of commercial vehicles whether we should issue more licenses in order to balance the situation well we have to consider the road space available to us and more licenses could in fact mean more competition and there could be more traffic regulation problems this might have uh, ventured outside the scope of the discussion today but I understand that concern when we uh, conduct a massive transport review or study we can give consideration to that point before the second round I like to say a few words I think members agree that we have always seen such on taxis in other words quite a big number of smartphones are placed on dashboards I'm not saying that every taxi driver is doing that but if a similar situation should occur in other words out of 18,000 odd taxis running on our roads if a minority of those are doing this that can still be a time bomb because they are making trips on our roads secondly taxi drivers uh, if they use a handheld phone or cradle the phone on their shoulders we want to regulate this because we don't want them to be distracted while driving they should concentrate on driving <coughs> therefore um, it is the same if they swipe their phones I think that will be in line with the legislative intent and another thing bargaining bargaining is entirely related to the placing of phones on dashboards the smartphones are also for the purpose of business operation what we are seeing is that there are these discount gangs making use of different phone numbers to contact customers some of them even distribute call cards in housing estates so people can page them if we prohibit bargaining then uh, we can help to minimize such behavior I hope the administration will take speedy measures to respond to members views I think the taxi trade is speaking in the same 
tune um, because the those who allow bargaining are the black sheep of the fold um, because in the end row safety is negatively affected and the reputation of the taxi trade is also tarnished. The Bureau should really listen to such views, especially those from the stakeholders, and make a decision soon. Okay? Second round. Wang Kwok Hing and Elizabeth Kwat, two minutes each. And that's it. And also Wu Chi Wai, two minutes. Then we'll have to deal with the motion to be moved by Mr. Wong Kwok Hing. Mr. Wong, Chairman, I'd like to thank members who spoke in the first round. Members unanimously criticized the administration for waiting for someone to die before action is taken. Mr. Albert Chan was very powerful in his um, criticism, but then the administration was also brushing aside such comments with a lot of flair, let's say. And still, the administration is saying, in a way, no, if no one dies, we'll not do anything. Just like in para 9 of the paper, Chairman, it is outrageous for them to be saying something like that. Let's say the police has already been tasked to do, do this and that. So they are not doing anything. They have asked the police to do something. And the second sentence, we will also closely monitor relevant overseas research findings and legal requirements. Again, they don't have to do anything. They are saying they will closely monitor something, so they are not doing anything. Therefore, I will leave about a minute for the Under Secretary to answer me this question. When will the police have to turn in their homework? And secondly, instead of closely monitoring overseas experience, can you do something? Chairman. We have started the work. As I said, the Road Safety Council has been asked to do its own survey. And we have told the police that we need to have data collected. Why don't you just tell me when the police will turn in their homework? Under Secretary, Chairman, please give us some time to start the work. We'll certainly let you know progress later. What do you mean by later? Later, what, what do you mean? Can you give us a timetable? Chairman, well, we will give you an account later. Chairman, I uh, take your proposal. Half a year, right? No, we need the administration to make this promise all right in half years time we will follow up on this issue dr elizabeth Quart. i hope that in six months time or in the near future the administration can give us a written reply on what data is to be collected and on uh, what criteria are being adopted in considering whether to legislate or not and i'd like to follow up on the point uh, just now uh, for trams lrt and MTR uh, conductors, if they use mobile phones uh, when they are driving, can the police take enforcement action, or will they be only subject to disciplinary action? Under Secretary, as mentioned just now, Chairman, for public transport occupying the road space, trams and LRT, for example, they are regulated under the road traffic ordinance. So when conductors or drivers use mobile phones, and depending on the circumstances, if they use the phones in a way to endanger the safety of other road users, they will be contravening the road traffic ordinance, either uh, by either committing the careless driving or dangerous driving ordinance. But does it mean it's okay as long as he doesn't affect the other road users' safety. That depends on the uh, merits of the case, uh, but I think for uh, that, the, the uh, public transport companies, they also have internal regulations. So members of the public can report to the police. If members of the public find that drivers, including drivers of public transport, 
use mobile phones in such a way as to endanger the passengers and ro other road users' safety. The time and the locations uh, can be noted, uh, can be jotted down, and, and to report to the police. But what if a passenger sees uh, a taxi driver using 11 mobile phones at the same time whilst driving and also communicating with other taxi drivers with the phones. Can the, the passenger report the case to police? Yes, the, yes, the details can be given to the police for follow up action. Mr. Wu Chiwai? Now, we're concerned uh, about professional drivers' awareness of road safety, but at the same time, I am uh, um, I need to be cautious about overregulating the trade. So I agree with Mr. Frankie Yick that we must not allow overregulation to prevent the normal operation of professional drivers' business. And the market is still evolving. Uh, maybe at present we see 10 mobile phones on dashboards. Maybe in the future one app can do all the functions. And when I attended a meeting of uh, minibus drivers, they said that some drivers already developed a tool Uh, or an app for dial a ride for taxis uh, without mentioning the word bargaining or discount. So the market will continue to develop and for passengers need to call taxi services. This is also uh, what we should consider so that we can strike a balance. On the one hand, we can consider the passenger safety. On the other hand, we can uh, also consider the um, role of taxi drivers in providing a convenience means of transport. Under Secretary, I uh, very much agree with Mr. Wuchiwai's comments and some other members' comments on uh, what is meant by uh, necessity and what is meant by uh, over-regulation and over-interference. And also, market changes should also be considered. I agree with Mr. Wu. And that is why, on this issue, if we take further action, we need to strike a proper balance. All right, Mr. Wang Kuo-Hing has moved the motion, seconded by Mr. Frankie Yik and Dr. Elizabeth Quat. And the wording of the motion has been tabled. Chairman, may I be allowed to read it out? Let me read it out. The government is urged to study the legislation on the danger of taxi drivers using smartphones while driving and to legislate uh, to ban uh, bargaining by taxi passengers. The two points are very clear. Any other comments from members? If not, this is not a legally binding uh, motion. Uh, members may not fully agree. Uh, having heard members' views today uh, that the study should be conducted, some may think that legislation should be kick-started right away. But the, the problem is very serious. But since this doesn't have any binding effect and members have expressed their views, and that is the government is urged to um, do something as soon as possible. So I put this to a vote. Will those in favor of this motion please raise your hands? Please put down your hands. Basically, unanimous support for the motion. So uh, I hope the administration has heard members' views and will uh, work on it as soon as possible. So much for this item. Next item now. Let's invite the administration in for this item. Next item, traffic distribution among road harbour crossings.
。嗱，我哋歡迎。May I welcome Secretary for Transport and Housing, Professor Anthony Zhang. He's personally led his team to attend the discussion of this agenda item. And、uh, his team, on his team, we have Ms. Ivy Law, Deputy Secretary for Transport and Housing, Mr. Tou Kam Biu, Deputy Commissioner for Transport, and Mr. Anthony Liu, Assistant Commissioner for Transport. Over to you, Professor. Now,、uh, in the beginning of last year, based on the、uh, consultancy study, the government embarked on a three-month public consultation exercise on the three tow adjustment options. That is. Uh, involving various degrees of tow reduction in each C and tow increases in the CHT cross harbour tunnel and eastern harbour crossing, to、uh, improve traffic distribution among RHCs, and、uh, they aim to divert traffic from CHT to EHC, thereby reducing traffic queue at CHT by 30 percent to 40 percent,、um, such that cross harbour traffic queue will not interfere with the non、uh, harbour crossing ones. And we have several options. Option A, resource management option. Option B,、um, toll adjustment based on the original toll structure of each C and each T. And option C, status quo for transport option. After the three-month public consultation period, the public、uh, were generally of the view、uh, that. Total adjustments is、uh, acceptable in redistributing traffic among the three harbour crossings, but there were no clear indication of support for any option. The views received were diverse, and there were also concerns whether the extra capacity can be or extra traffic can be absorbed by the HC, or whether traffic congestions would become more serious. The relevant DCs were concerned, and there were also、uh, voices in the community on the, uh, the, uh, questioning the effectiveness of the proposed option, and also some suggest that、uh, the Western Harbour Crossing should be. Uh, included in the exercise, and due to the latest changes in the traffic condition, we've conducted the latest traffic、uh, assessment, and it was shown、uh, that the HC's daily throughput has increased to about seven to seventy-two thousand vehicles daily, and if、uh, the traffic is diverted from CHT to HC. Um, amounting to 5,000, the throughput of EHC will then increase to about 77,000 vehicles, which is close to its design capacity. And the figure may be on the rise. And according to the latest traffic throughput at the CHT in 2013, it showed a drop of more than 3,000 vehicles per day as compared to 2011. Some traffic originally using CHT might have been diverted to use either EHC or Western Harbour Crossing WHC. Due to the latest changes in traffic situations at the two tunnels, the views of the public and the concerns of the relevant districts, the government decides to put in abeyance the implementation of the trial scheme. I want to emphasize here that the government's decision this time is to put in abeyance for the time being the implementation of the. Trial scheme of increasing the toll for each、uh, CHT and decreasing the toll for each C, not the toll adjustment options as a whole. We're looking at the、um, appropriate time to implement the the scheme again.、Uh, we. Don't agree that uh, the uh, traffic congestion has been alleviated. Now, on the redistribution of traffic among the three harbour crossings, this is still、uh, an issue. And the government considers that the commissioning of Central Wan Chai Bypass in 2017 would be an opportune time to ease the congestion of connecting roads of Western Harbour Crossing, and this will provide a basis for us to consider tow adjustments at WHC when we drop an overall scheme to rationalise the distribution of traffic among the road to harbour crossings. Um, the EHC's ownership will be transferred back to the government in 2016. There will be greater flexibility in devising a toll adjustment scheme. From now to 2017, the government will 
uh, closely monitor the traffic situation and implement the measures when necessary. And the transport department will continue to monitor the traffic situation and the traffic throughput among the three RHCs and implement further traffic management measures. Uh, for example, the traffic department, the transport department will continue to develop our mass transport system and uh, also to uh, provide uh, uh, tra public transport information and will also encourage franchise uh, operators to offer interchange concessions. Um, based on the feedback received in this consultation exercise, we will update the, um, the throughput on a regular basis so that we can understand the latest changes in the traffic condition and um, prepare our tow adjustment options. And we'll also holistically and, and conduct a territory-wide review on the traffic congestion. We'll be rolling out a study on the traffic condition congestion and due cost to come up with medium and long term uh, measures. We will also consider uh, the implementation of electronic road pricing in Central District as the Central Wan Chai Bypass will offer an alternative route to um, for our users to uh, bypass the, uh, the electronic road uh, pricing section. We will consider uh, in terms of the pricing uh, level and other implementation details, uh, conduct an assessment. The transport department has also uh, sent officials to draw reference from overseas jurisdictions on electronic road pricing schemes in other jurisdictions. And we'll also continue to develop the, the railway transfer system as a backbone of the public transport system to ease traffic congestion. Chairman, as public transport is very important in our transport network in Hong Kong, after completing the 2020 railway d development strategy, uh, review the administration will review on the long term public transport planning and development which will cover different forms of transport and the different transport strategies will be enhanced the government will take a multi pronged approach to tackle the traffic congestion uh, at grade seven members have raised their hands they would like to ask questions and see whether uh, there are any more eight Members, this is the last agenda item, but we still have an item under AOB, um, as proposed by Mr. Uh, Gary Fan on uh, overseas duty visit. Okay, talk. Our meeting needs to be concluded at 10:30 because we have the railway subcommittee coming up. There are eight members, and I will allow three minutes each. Let us see whether we'll still have time to look into the study visit issue. If there is no time, I can only postpone it to the next meeting. Okay? Uh, because there is no urgency. If members agree, this will be the arrangement. Three minutes each. The name list is Pun Xiong Peng, Yip Chi Ming, Wang Kuo Heng, Chen Wei, Yip, Yi Chia Hien, Fan Kuo Wei, Kuo Pui Fan, Elizabeth Kuo and Paul Chen. Uh, Tong Li Chair, actually, it should be Tong Li Chair, of course. Pun Xiuping, thank you, Chairman. The administration is delaying the project and they're expecting the Central Wan Chai Bypass to be commissioned in 2017, so congestion will be alleviated. My question is there are three years to go. Do you have any reserve option? The tunnels and the link roads are already very congested. In para 14, you say you will prepare for a review of long-term traffic planning and you would consult the public accordingly. When will you start the review? Many people are saying that perhaps we need a fourth tunnel to tackle congestion. Will that be included in the review? Chairman, Certainly, we need to assess the need for a fourth tunnel. And secondly, in fact, we need to know whether it is technically feasible. Do we have the spots for portals and what will be the impact on the harbour? Right now, we do not have any consideration about uh, the fourth tunnel. We hope there will be 
a rational distribution amongst the three tunnels. We use 2017 as the target because we'd like to factor in the Western Harbour crossing. And then in that year, the Central Wan Chai bypass will also be commissioned. There should be some help to the traffic in the vicinity. Paragraph 14 mentions a review on the long term public transport planning. Later on, when we have announced the railway development strategy, we will embark on this immediately. I hope I can give an account to this panel later on in the year. That will be a comprehensive review involving the railway, franchised buses, PLBs and taxis. In other words, if the tunnels are still congested in 2017, there will not be any um, standby options. Is that right? Chairman, our observation is that at EHT, the traffic volume is growing. As for CHT, as we said in the paper, we could see a trend of decrease. We dare not say this will be the solution, but at least the problem is not deteriorating. And these are the lowest figures in 20 years. Of course, CHT is still very congested, and we have to face up to it. Mr. Frankie Yick. Chairman, if you remember at previous panel meetings, I have said that the consultant's proposal of increasing toll for CHT and reducing it for EHT will solve the problem, and it's good that you have abandoned it. The Secretary says that you might consider introducing ERP. My question is, do you have any projection for post-commissioning of Central Wan Chai Bypass? What will be the situation in Central by that time? I remember there were previous reports saying that when Central Wan Chai Bypass is commissioned, theoretically, there should be some improvement to the traffic situation in Central. So by that time, do we still need to introduce ERP? And previously, a consultant com um, proposed that you should repurchase West Harbour Tunnel. In 2016, the EHT will be repurchased. And if you also repurchase Western Harbour Tunnel, then all three tunnels will be managed by you. And you will have a lot of flexibility in terms of traffic management. According to present flow and the lowest charge for private cars, the toll would be at $2.7 billion a year, but in the end, uh, it would be higher because the toll is heavier for heavy vehicles. So can you consider this if EHC and WHC would charge less for the sake of traffic management, and if CHT will charge a higher toll because it's right in the middle, it should be most effective for traffic management. I hope the Bureau will consider this. About 120,000 trips use CHT every day. If uh, each car holds five passengers and each takes 30 minutes to use the CHT, look at the loss to productivity and medical costs because of pollution. It is a very high social cost indeed, taking uh, all these into consideration. Think about all that. Don't be afraid of being accused of collusion with the business sector if you repurchase uh, WHC. Indeed, uh, if we were to purchase WHC, we really have certain considerations and worries. But with regard to traffic distribution, we said that indeed the WHC will be a factor. As to whether the administration owns WHC, it is a different concept. The most crucial point is how we set the tolls for the three tunnels so that we can have a reasonable balance of traffic distribution. We have also to be mindful about the link roads support. It seems the situation now is different from the situation in 2011 when the consultant conducted the study, and that is why we have uh, decided to abandon the scheme proposed by the consultant as to whether there will be a big improvement in Central after CWB comes into operation. I remember the consultant said that if by that time 
uh, when CWB is commissioned, there will be an alternative road, and ERP could be introduced in Central by that time. It would be more feasible. Mr. Wang Kuo Hing, I'd like to ask a follow-up question. What is your position now vis-a-vis -vis the repurchase of WHC? Are you studying it? Are you discussing it? Or have you put it aside? Because when the last transport secretary was here, he said, uh, we are still discussing, we are considering it, and he did not say he would not look into it. So, Mr. Secretary, what is your view on repurchase of WHC? Chairman, I don't remember what the last secretary said, but the administration is not talking to the WHC about repurchase. So will you now maintain the status quo? When we consider traffic distribution amongst the tunnels, uh, we have uh, listened to members and also views collected during the consultation period. We agree that we should also take on board the factor of WHC. Now, how should we set the tolls of the tunnels so that uh, traffic distribution will be made more rational? That is our consideration. Second question. Private cars are growing fast in number to the tune of 17,000 every year over the past few years, especially in 2007. There was relaxation on uh, registration tax for green vehicles, and that helped the increase. I think you should suppress the growth in the fleet of private cars. Don't just think about ERP for Central, because on the one hand, you have more private cars, and on the other hand, ERP will not be able to solve all the problems. Secretary. Mr. Wong talked about the growth in private cars. Indeed, yes, that's the trend, um, and that's about 3 4 percent every year. Growth in the vehicle fleet will affect road use. People buy a car and they're going to use it. Of course, there might not be a 100 percent correlation between car ownership and road use, but still it is our concern. As I said in my introduction, we're going to start a study on road congestion. We are now fine-tuning the details. We will also look into the growth in the vehicle fleet, the trend for car ownership, driving behavior, congestion, and ERP, etc., and also how overseas cities comparable to ourselves control vehicle increase. Uh, like Tokyo and Singapore. We have to be practical in tackling the issue. Mr. Lee Chat Yen. Thank you, Chairman. The Labour Party said that all tunnels in Hong Kong should be taken into consideration together, not just the three cross harbour tunnels, but also Thai Lam and Tate Scan Tunnel. We should reduce congestion for the entire road network. We, of course, demand a reduction of toll at WHC. And you should also look at Thai Lam together with WHC. You should charge one toll for Thai Lam Tunnel and WHC so there will be less congestion. Now you say you wouldn't increase the toll for HC and, or actually, reduce it for each C and increase it for CHT. We don't exactly like it either, but if you want to do something like that, you should do it in an overall fashion. You say you wait for CWB. If that's the case, then do it all at one go. All tunnels should have toes lowered, but where there is most congestion, like central, you should go for ERP. You should roll out the entire package at one go, so you can reduce congestion in the most jammed areas, and if commercial vehicles need to use the tunnels, they can enjoy smooth traffic. Can you consider doing this as a package, Secretary? To a certain extent, we are going to do a territory-wide review. As I said, congestion will affect traffic flow. There will be impact on the air, on business, etc. Our overall objective is to 
allow traffic to proceed smoothly. We are going to look at the role, the um, mode mix of public transport, etc. As for the three um, RHCs, they are different from other roads because we are talking about cross harbor traffic and railways can be a source of help. Even if we take all tunnels together, we have to concentrate on the congestion areas. Is it because of the road configuration or poor management or what? Prices also have a role to play because it has an impact on driver's choice of uh, alignment. So um, a uniform toll may not be the final solution. We have to look into that in detail. But of course, our attention is on congestion. What is the design capacity? It is 118,000. Now, you always say there is not enough uh, road complement, so you suppress it to 55,000. But in 2013, in your monthly report, you said that the daily average of WHC reached 619,518, and that's already uh, in an overcapacity situation. But then we do not see any congestion at WHC. So it's clear that you have underestimated the capacity for WHC. In Central, we have Long Wall Road, and also in Central Kowloon, we have new roads. Therefore, more motorists are willing to make use of WHC. And it goes to show that the WHC has capacity to absorb more traffic flow. So I have a question that's similar to other members. It is actually a common sense point. We don't have to wait for commissioning of CWB. The administration should start to repurchase WHC in order to adjust the tolls for the three RHCs so you have better distribution of traffic. And then there will be less burden on EHC and CHT. When will you do that? And you say that the daily average of CHT is 120,000. You say uh, there is a reduction of 3,000. However, the daily average is still much higher than the design capacity of 78,000 for CHT. In other words, congestion has been serious all the time at CHT. Now you mentioned ER ERP. Um, I think you're just delaying the issue. You have been to other places to study ERP, have you? And have you? thought about other short-term measures to tackle daily congestion at CHT. Secretary, now on the throughput of WHC and the capacity, indeed for the tunnel itself there is uh, capacity, but because of traffic congestion in the vicinity, we were unable to fully utilize the capacity of WHC. We've seen in the recent three or four years the uh, throughput has increased with more drivers choosing to go by WHC, but this is not the same thing as repurchasing WHC. As uh, investment, as a, as a tool for investment, as uh, the use of public money, we need to consider whether this is the most desirable. Uh, on the setting of toll, uh, this it has to do with um, distributing traffic uh, rather than the use of public money. And I'll defer to Mr. Toll to say more. Thank you, Chairman. On electronic road pricing ERP, the aim is to resolve traffic congestion in a particular area and in the area concerned, this can help improve air quality, reduce noise level, etc. And through as a user pay principle, uh, it seeks to reduce traffic, especially during peak hours. Then in the 80s, Hong Kong has started to uh, embark on studies involving ERPs, and so far, no consensus has been reached due to the following three reasons. First, uh, privacy reasons. Secondly, no alternative routes. And thirdly, economic uh, down cycle. Mr. Albert Chen, Chairman, now we've been discussing this issue for many years. We cannot 
uh, address the problem of traffic redist- uh, distribution and traffic digestion just by these two tunnels. We need to take a holistic approach. Now about the trial scheme, you say that this may not be effective. I think the whole uh, direction is wrong. The best uh, approach is to standardize the management of the three tunnels. There should be a, a, an authority uh, to be established, and the uh, WHC should be repurchased. Um, together with each C, which by uh, at that time um, was still um, a franchised uh, each C, uh, that should be standardized for redistribution of traffic among the three RHCs. Over the years, uh, since Sierra Leone to uh, Eva Chang to this new secretary, uh, Discussion uh, has uh, with the um, tunnel companies have eventually been suspend been suspended, and uh, traffic congestion has a huge impact. Productivity loss. Uh, we're talking about um, about sixty per, per per hour per person. So we lost millions of dollars because of traffic congestions at RHCs. So if you buy back WHC and adjust tolls to improve traffic distribution, you can make up for the loss in productivity, if not enhancing productivity itself. And for years, the government has lacked vision in dealing with this issue. We're just beating about the bush. I think it's the uh, dereliction of duty, and uh, for WHC, we have still more than 10 years to go. So, will you buy back WHC as soon as possible to standardize the management? Now, um, to respond to Mr. Elbachan's question, we are not considering um, or discussing with WHC on buying back WHC at the moment. We understand members' concerns. We also agree that uh, WHC should also be included in um, the toll adjustment options to improve traffic distribution about among the RHCs so that um, th- we can rationalize the traffic distribution. Basically, we agree with this direction, Chairman. The administration to should consider, say, um, in the name of public interest, do this. Just like acquiring and resuming uh, agricultural land, uh, you um, acquire land and resume land from individual villages, but not uh, from large consortia like the city group. So I strongly recommend the government for taking this, um, uh, for resorting to favoritism, Mr. Paul Chair. Circumstances matter. The study was conducted about a year ago, and at that time, it was suggested that by the middle of this year, depending on the outcome of the study, we can implement the trial scheme so that by 2017, through toll adjustment, we can resolve the traffic congestion. However, after a year or so, and having spent public money, we're back to uh, ground zero, and the, the it seems uh, the, that the government is helpless. Well, just now you talk about different options, and after going through the studies today, what more can be done? Uh, we see changes in the throughput at, among the tunnels, but they may have to, not to do with the tunnels, but to do with the um, capacity of our road network for CHT and WHC in the past. After uh, going out of the tunnel, the uh, traffic could be quite smooth, but now we see traffic congestions everywhere. Secretary, last year when we uh, Propose the option of reducing tolls for EHC and increasing tolls for CHT. The aim wasn't to reduce CHT's traffic uh, throughput to its capacity. Our aim was to reduce the traffic queue by 30 to 40 percent. 
so that the cross harbor traffic queue would not interfere with the non harbor crossing traffic. So, traffic congestion at CHT would remain a problem. However, after proposing this uh, uh, toll adjustment uh, package, we have heard a lot of views, and many suggested that WHC should also be included to achieve uh, greater effectiveness. And also, by 2017, the Central One Chai Bypass will be commissioned, which will help in improving the traffic uh, condition for WHC. And over the past two years, for RHCs, there have been changes. CHT throughput has been reduced by about 3,000 comparing to 2011. At the same time, traffic throughput for EHC increased. So there have been voices in the community in terms of um, or expressing concerns over increased traffic at HC, and uh, this is the direction we'll, we will follow. We will, um, it will be the same, but we need to be prudent about the timing. Mr. Tony Chair, our secretary has decided to put in, in advance implementation of the trial scheme. And I'm happy to hear that because I've all along questioned the findings of the consultancy uh, study uh, regarding the toll adjustment options. Toll adjustment should aim at rationalizing traffic distribution rather than increasing revenue. So before 2017, you should do more on managing traffic. For example, on uh, imparting information. This is important for road users. However, it may be uh, too late uh, when they receive this, this information that they've already chosen certain routes. So can any alternatives be um, proposed? Uh, I, along with other members, are concerned about the growth in pri the number of private cars. And Secretary, I hope that you will consider the fourth RHC, because with increasing population and increase in number of tourists, you should consider these factors if the capacity is reached. You should plan ahead for the fourth RHC. Uh, if this is proceeded with, you're talking about something ten years down the road, and you need land and planning, etc. So this is something uh, for you to think about in the long term. So before 2017, what other measures do you have in improving the traffic congestion? Now, in a moment, we're going to. I mean, in due course, we're going to roll out a study uh, in traffic congestion and on disseminating information. I'll defer to Mr. Tove, Transport Department. We're also concerned about the uh, accuracy and the timing of delivering information. We have a, uh, um, an app uh, on uh, smartphone platforms disseminating government information. And initially, we also noted a delay in delivering information of about 20 to 30 minutes when the app was first launched. We looked into the reasons and we discussed with the contractor, and the delay uh, has now been shortened by uh, as much as 10 minutes. And we'll we are st considering whether we s this can be further shortened. This is important, I agree, and we'll try to improve further. Dr. Lo Wai Kwok. Thank you, Chairman. Now, previously, the government proposed to increase tolls for HC and decrease, or increase tolls for CHT and decrease tolls for EHC to rationalize the distribution of traffic among RHCs. At that time, uh, I did not object uh, I, as long as the proposal could ease the traffic congestion. However, I also have the concern uh, that uh, for other 
traffic uh, situations in and other areas, uh, traffic congestion is uh, equally serious in the morning. For example, for uh, in Charity and Tate's Can Can Tunnel, and uh, all the way to HC, and each uh, WHC still have uh, reserve capacity. But coming out from WHC during peak hours, you can see the traffic to Central or Wan Chai is not smooth at all. And with the commission of Central Wan Chai bypass, I believe the traffic congestion can be eased. And I agree completely that we should consider how we should use the um, uh, the um, unused capacity of WHC, so I think it's pragmatic for the government to put in advance the trial scheme its implementation. At the same time, even after the CWB is commissioned, you need to consider the supporting roads to, say, the Western District, and there are three uh, roads in uh, three major roads in Kowloon, Central uh, Kowloon, and Eastern Kowloon, Western Kowloon, and the traffic congestion is becoming more serious, lasting longer, and traffic queues are becoming longer. If other connecting roads do not improve, I think that uh, even after 2017, these problems are still inevitable. In Taipo, uh, in the morning after widening of Tolo Harbor, the uh, traffic congestion uh, doesn't start from Hong Lok Yun, but after Science Park, and on uh, reaching close to the race course, traffic congestion begin uh, begins, and that's why I take uh, the alternative route. I understand in Charlton's district council they have discussed the issue many times and have yet to come up with any good measure to ease traffic congestion. Now the um, trial scheme has been put on the back burners, but uh, for connecting roads, more should be done. More consideration should be given to improve them. All right, that's a comment, very clear. Dr. Kwakaki, thank you, Chairman. I think we all agree that the government uh, is deciding to put this trial scheme on the back burners, and we need to consider what else should be done. And by 2023, the WHC would pass back to the government. Apart from CWB, other link roads are not in an ideal situation, like in Yamate and Mong Kok. And if you exit from WHC, if traffic doesn't go through CWB or but to Shangwan still it will be congested. Shouldn't you do something now to strengthen the connecting roads system in 2023? Everything will be under your control and you have to do something now. And also uh, driving behavior. I agree that you might want to consider ERP but I don't want you to spend money on the study and then like uh, before you spend $20 million on ERP consultancy and in the end you don't implement it. But what about park and ride? You mentioned it, but you did not exactly implement it. In other words, you should allow people to park and then go for public transport. If people live in northwestern new territories, many of them have to drive, but they don't want to drive into the urban area. Could you make use of the space underneath flyovers or vacant sites? which are lying idle, so you provide parking spaces for people to park and ride? Secretary, a brief reply. Number one, WHC and EHC will revert to government 2016 for EHC and 2023 for WHC. So the member is correct. In the end, we will own all three tunnels. But when we talk about traffic distribution, conceptually, that is different from ownership. Because in the end, if we want to achieve traffic distribution, we have to do it with economic incentive, that is fair adjustment. Now, of course, motorists have other considerations. They may consider the timing, etc. But um, Dr. Kwok has put his finger on a bigger issue, and that is how we can provide an incentive for people to use their private cars less, uh, say, for example, by providing park and ride 
facilities. We can do this as a part of the study into congestion, say at railway stations. Can we provide a car park or something like that? We can look into that. And uh, in this study on congestion which will be rolled out, we are going to take a comprehensive look. We won't just look at the RHCs. Well, a, a brief point. I am afraid that you would again spend money on consultancy on ERP and then not do it. Uh, are you going to embark on such a consultancy again and how much will be spent? As I said in my introductory remark, the TD has started some initial research. As you know, we have had a few rounds of research already and therefore we have basic information and recently we have sent people to Singapore, London and Gothenburg in Sweden because they have a sort of ERP and we are trying to learn from the experience. So you are not going to spend on consultancy yet. Okay, Ms. Elizabeth Quart. Thank you, Chair. We believe the consultancy's proposal is not exactly very reasonable. I think you are being responsive by abandoning abandoning it. But there are three years to go before 2017. The congestion will continue to deteriorate both at CHT and EHC. The DAB has made proposals for different measures to be taken in order to tackle traffic flow. For example, to expedite toll paying and the bus stops at tunnel portals should be expanded to allow smoother flow of pedestrians and traffic. You should also review the link roads around the tunnels. I don't know whether you have considered doing all this. Secretary, these are concrete measures whether or not there will be traffic distribution by fare adjustment or toll adjustment at the tunnels. All these have to to be done, say how we can expedite toll paying, how we can allow more electronic paying of toll, and also expanding the uh, bus space. Uh, we have to look at the physical situation to see whether there is actually space on the ground. And also Dr. Kwok's proposal about park and ride, and also, of course, the um, roads around the tunnels are a problem. The CHT traffic queues are affecting uh, traffic going into other directions, uh, in other words, non-tunnel traffic. But Ms. Quat's proposals are all um, within our plan. So will there be a plan or timetable? You say you would consider it, but you have said that for some time already. And we can't see any plan, we can't see any consultation, we can't see any implementation either. We have three years before 2017. And there will be more people living in the NT. And you can see that the EHC is getting more congested. If you have not started the consultation, you don't even have a plan for implementation, then with more delays, you will use up those three years. Now we are suspending the trial scheme for toll adjustment, but it doesn't mean we'll do nothing in the interim. In fact, this is the time for us to watch the traffic closely. I hope members will also be aware of one point. In the coming few years, there will be a few local railways that will be commissioned, and that will certainly relieve burden on the roads. Later on, we'll conduct the thematic study on congestion, and we will give an account on how we are going to do the study in due course to this panel. Mr. Chen Han Pan. Last time when we discussed traffic distribution for the tunnels, I mentioned that the three tunnels are congested at uh, different extents. After 9 a.m., WHC is not congested at all. But CHT, the congestion is almost round the clock. Therefore, with regard to traffic distribution for the three RHCs, we would like to make use of WHC to have traffic diverted from CHT. Say after the peak hours, some cars should be allude, um, lured to use WHC instead of CHT, but you have not done anything. 
you are now abandoning the consultant's proposal. Would you still consider making WHC and use it as a streaming tunnel? Secondly, ERP, you would like to make the public use uh, public transport, but as our railway subcom is going to say, um, the railways are more or less saturated. The capacity is at 100 percent already. If you put more people on the railways, it, they will be more congested. If people don't drive, if uh, people have comfortable public transport taking them to work, then of course, of course that's something good. But the MTRCL is extremely congested. Therefore, is it that we really have to go for ERP to relieve congestion during the peak hours? Well, I doubt the effectiveness of ERP. You quote the Singapore experience. Well, I have been to Singapore, and in fact, the people are aggrieved by the ERP. They say they have been deprived of the freedom to drive. Are you going to introduce more grievances to the public of Hong Kong? Secretary, I will focus on ERP. Certainly, this will have an impact on motorists. That's why we stress that if we are going to have a pilot in a certain district, there must be alternative roads, so people have another way to reach their destination. But then the purpose of ELP, if it is implemented in any city at all, is to have an impact on demand. In other words, suppression on demand by having a, a fee to be paid. However, when we are going to do it, we have to look at the traffic demand and uh, the different modes of transport, how it will impact on public transport and professional drivers. All that has to be considered. In this past period, the professional bodies, the community and academics have asked the administration to face up to this issue because if there is extreme congestion, we, we really have to think about ELP and we are willing. All members have asked questions. Last, I'd like to say a few words. We welcome the suspension of the consultant's proposal about toll adjustment. But we still need to look at congestion in our own network, particularly within the uh, CHT. I believe there is still room to reduce its traffic flow because actually the management mode has been the same for CHT for 20, 30 years. The DAB has proposed that we should have one or two more auto toll um, lanes, or we can allow, say, the use of autobus at CHT. That can expedite toll paying. What the um, worst congestion is with uh, the two auto toll lanes, so other lanes are also congested. This is a, a management problem. I hope that within the short term, maybe you can enhance your management efficiency and also management in the roads surrounding the tunnels, especially during peak hours. Do not allow or actually relieve congestion at the merging points, so there will be fewer accidents. I hope the Bureau will work with more effort so that in 2016-2017, we can have more concrete uh, Tra traffic diversion measures. We have dealt with all the agenda items on the agenda for this meeting as for Mr. Gary Fan's proposal about a study tour that will be postponed to the next meeting. The next meeting will be held on the 21st of March at 10.45. Okay, meeting is adjourned here. Thank you, Secretary, and your team for attending the meeting.